Hi, my name is Yegor Naumov. I'm the product marketing manager for Team City at JetBrains. And today I'd like to talk to you about how Team City can help you organize your CI and CD process. To be more specific, I would like to focus on how Team City can improve the speed of your CI CD pipelines by up to 40%. And I will demonstrate how we at JetBrains achieve those numbers in real world scenarios. So, why is speed so important when we talk about CI and CD? Well, when I usually ask the question about what CI and CD, uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment, uh, allows our customers to achieve, I hear answers about improving quality of code, providing faster feedback cycles to developers on their changes, and simplifying the process of releasing software to customers. And these are all correct, because if we look at the, some of the official formal definitions of continuous integration, they all talk about similar things. Uh, detecting integration errors quicker, uh, earlier, reducing problems, improving quality of code, and reducing time to market. And as we can see, they all mention speed quickly, rapidly, quicker, uh, reducing time, Improving speed uh, of software de delivery is uh, the key component of CI and CD. Now, I would like to share a story from JetBrains with you. Uh, we also have a CI CD process implemented at JetBrains, uh, and we think that JetBrains is a great testing grounds for a CI CD tool because we have a large variety of types of projects that we uh, build on a daily basis. In addition to 30, um, commercial products, which you probably have heard of, uh, products like IntelliJ IDEA, PyCharm, uh, WebStorm, and others. We also develop hundreds of plugins, libraries, open source projects, and so on. Uh, the variety of uh, the types of these applications range from monoliths to microservices. Uh, they are both desktop, and there are both desktop and SaaS applications, and we even have a programming language Kotlin that we also provide a CI CD pipeline for. And all of this variety is built, tested, and deployed daily with Team City, uh, which is, by the way, uh, also built, tested, and deployed daily to our internal users using Team City itself. We release a new version of Team City internally at JetBrains every 24 hours, and we let everyone at JetBrains use it uh, for their CI and CD uh, builds. And on that internal Team City server, uh, there's, it's, it's a quite, a, quite an impressive size server. We run 7,000 projects, which generate around 100,000 build, builds per day, and those builds are processed by more than 3,000 build agents, the majority of which are launched on demand. And all of this is on a single installation of Team City. It's uh, one of the largest in the world, although there's customers that run even larger setups. And we run that as an on-premises installation with most of the agents running in the cloud. Now, I'd like to share one of the internal examples with you, the case of uh, IntelliJ platform. Um, IntelliJ is the backbone of the majority of JetBrains IDEs, everything from IntelliJ IDEA to PyCharm, WebStorm Rider, and the others. Everything is built on top of the IntelliJ platform. This is our largest project. Uh, it, is, uh, it has 38 and a half million lines of code, 250,000 tests run on every code change, and their CI pipeline currently takes one hour to run all tests and three hours to build a release version uh, of a product on any commit. Now, I understand this may sound not too impressive to some of you, one hour and three hours. However, this used to be five and eight hours respectively. And if you think of it in terms of developer productivity, it basically means that developers can now touch code more uh, multiple times per working day instead of just once or twice per day. Uh, this allows them to keep working on a feature or keep working on a task. Uh, almost with uh, like with little interruptions as compared to interrupting that every every day or so. Now we've collected some stats from the IntelliJ project over one month on Team City, and in just one month, Team City has launched more than one hundred and fifty thousand uh, build agents uh, for the IntelliJ builds. 
the majority of them were launched on AWS. And those 150,000 uh, 150, build agents have uh, generated a total of 56 years of build time in just one month. What's even more impressive is that Team City has optimized uh, 38 years on top of that 56 years of build time, which means that Team has essentially saved 40% of build time over a month and did not have to use extra build resources or run extra cloud costs because of those optimizations. Now let's see how Team City achieves that. There's essentially three key aspects uh, how Team City makes it possible. First is the build chains. The build chains is similar to what is often called pipelines in other CI and CD tools. Uh, the difference is that instead of running stages one after another on every commit, Team City analyzes the whole build chain, makes a snapshot, and decides which of the parts of this build chain could be uh, reused and not built, uh, and thus it saves time. Uh, by just reusing those results. Now, test parallelization uh, is a second aspect, and it allows to split builds that have tests into multiple parallel stages. Team City does this intelligently by analyzing the history of those, of those tests and grouping them into groups of similar duration. And cloud profiles make it possible to allocate unlimited resources, uh, unlimited cloud resources, to enable that unlimited parallelization. Let's see that in action in a small demo. What we have here is a simple uh, Team City project, uh, which builds a web app that consists of a backend and a frontend part. So our project in Team City consists of these five build configurations: one for backend build, one for the Docker backend build, which creates Docker images and pushes it to a registry. One for front-end build, one for front-end Docker build, and one for deployment. The deployment is not really deploying anything. It just echoes deploy, but it should be fine for our purposes. If we look at how all those builds are related to each other, they form the, the following build pipeline or build chain in Team City terms, where build front-end and build front-end Docker image are uh, dependent on each other, and so, so are build backend and build backend Docker image uh, build configurations, and then the deployment is the last step, which depends on all of these. Now, our backend build is a uh, Java backend, so we run a single uh, step that does Gradle build and Gradle tests, and it consists of 126 tests. Uh, let's go ahead and just break one of those tests and see what happens. Now, I will break this uh, very complicated test which asserts that two should equal two. We say that two should equal one. Let's see if uh, uh, it likes that. Now we commit the changes to the main branch. Please do not repeat this uh, at home. This is not a recommended development practice when you are a team of more than one developer. But again, should be fine for our demo purposes. Um, we've made a change to this file, which sits under a alarm management subdirectory, uh, which is where our Java code resides. Now, this is important to remember when we look back at Team City. Uh, Team City has picked up the change and started the build and the build backend build configuration. And uh, let's let's look at what it looks like in Team City when it runs a build. So essentially, what you will see is uh, a series of different information parts. One of them is the status of the build and which step it is running. If it's green, then everything is uh, currently OK. If, if it's red, then uh, it's either one of the steps uh, has failed or one of the tests has failed. Um, it will then show you the changes that went uh, into this uh, build. Uh, you will see the author, the date, et cetera, and then, then what was changed, which file, and what was the commit message. Uh, it will also show the build agent. Uh, in our case, we're running on Team City Cloud, so the build agents are provided by JetBrains but we'll get back to this in a bit. Uh, and it will also show you the, the duration of the build being run. Uh, we already see that the build is failing, uh, but let's return to this in a second and before look at the last build in our build chain, as you remember, the deployment build. And we will open this build, which is currently waiting in the queue, waiting to be built. We'll open its dependencies. 
And what we see here is again, the same build chain. We'll see the deployment is waiting. It's waiting for the build backend Docker image, which is in turn is waiting for the build backend, which is currently running despite the fact that it's already failing. Uh, however, it's not waiting any longer for the these two for the front end builds. And is that because they have finished already uh, and they were so quick? Well, not exactly. Uh, the reason they are already finished uh, is that Team City was able to reuse two builds from previous build chains. And if we click here, we see which builds exactly it has reused. And in our case, it's specifically the two front end builds. Uh, and what it means is that in this build chain run, Team City will not run these two builds out of these five, meaning that it already saves us a lot of time based on this uh, simple reason. And uh, the reason it has chosen to not run those builds is that it, it has only detected the changes in the backend uh, related parts of the repository. As, as you remember, we changed this, uh, this single file that sits under alarm management, uh, which consists, uh, which uh, um, includes our Java code. So Team City is smart enough to analyze the whole, take the snapshot of the whole build chain, see which changes came in, which, which changes triggered this build chain. And then if, if, if there are uh, suitable builds from previous runs that are successful, it will just reuse them. And that's already one of the key points of uh, optimizations. Now going back to the backend uh, build configuration, Let's look at the tests and how Team City reports those tests. So we see that there's one failing test already. Uh, the build is not yet finished. So this is a very handy feature that allows developers to get feedback on their changes uh, before the build is finished. So they don't have to wait 10 or 20 minutes uh, just to see that one of those tests failed during the fifth minute, for example. And now it gives you some detailed information about the failing test. You can open up uh, and see uh, which test is failing. You can see its history uh, across previous runs. We see it, it was failing before a couple of times. It has been fixed in some following builds. Uh, if there are multiple builds in different projects, uh, Team City will aggregate all that information under this single page, and you'll see across different projects, across your uh, structure of builds, uh, uh, which changes were breaking, uh, breaking the test. Now you can also uh, just go into the test and uh, copy its name directly. Uh, find it in your find it in your uh, IDE. Open up and uh, uh, edit directly in the IDE on the specific line of code. Now uh, it also would show you or present you the stack trace that makes it easier to debug whatever is failing. And you can even see the diff right in place in Team City that will see, uh, show you the difference in. Uh, what's been changed. Uh, in our case, it's quite a simple change, but in a, in a uh, real world scenario, you have, you'll have a more meaningful uh, representation of different lines of code that being changed. Uh, okay, so uh, our build has finally failed. Uh, it has finished. Uh, we have seen the, uh, the failing test. We see that our deployment build configuration has also failed because of the fact that one of its dependencies has failed. So, um, and we see that the build has uh, taken four minutes and 20 seconds. Let's remember this number uh, because it will be important later. I want to fix my test. But before doing that, uh, I, I'm not too happy with this four minutes and 20 seconds. And I want to go ahead and split the 126 tests that were run into several parts. For that, I'm adding a build feature uh, that is called parallel tests. Uh, the only parameter that I give it is how many batches um, Team City should split the tests into. And uh, I will input five here because why not? Five is a good number. Uh, and once we have that enabled, I will go ahead and uh, fix the test. I will say that two should equal two. I will again commit the change uh, into the main branch. Uh, again, not recommended uh, behavior. Your colleagues will probably not be too happy uh, with you if you do that. Uh, and uh, Team City will pick up the change. It is already seeing one pending change from me, shows the author, shows the changes, uh, and it will start the build in a second. And when it will start the build, 
we will take a look at something interesting that's happening and something different from what we saw before. Uh, so it's putting the build in the queue and now it's starting the, starting the build. And we kind of see the similar uh, bits of information here. Uh, it's, it's, it shows the status, it shows the author, it shows the change, it shows the duration. What it doesn't show though is the agent. And now this is an interesting part. And the reason for that we'll explain in a second. Uh, if I go into my backend build, if I open the dependencies tab, I see here on the right our part, our piece of the build chain that we saw previously. So the backend uh, build uh, is followed by the backend Docker image build, and then which is followed by the deployment build. What we didn't see before, though, is these uh, five builds that came out of nowhere. So. This is specifically how TeamCity handles the parallelization of tests under the hood. It splits them into five separate build configurations, right, runs them as five, as five separate builds. And for each of those builds, uh, we have a separate bits of information with, with the log, with the changes, with the tests, and what's important, with an agent. So for each one of those uh, builds, uh, there's a separate build agent which is assigned. Now, when I run this as I do it now in TeamCity Cloud, I, am, I, don't, I don't have to really worry about the build agent if, you're, if I'm using the ones provided by JetBrains because those are scaled up on demand and I don't really worry about that. They, will, they would be available to me uh, almost immediately. However, if I run it on my on-premises TeamCity, I need to, excuse me, yeah, one second. What I need to do is provide uh, a way for TeamCity to launch those agent on demand. The best way to do that is to run them in a cloud. And for that, we will be using a cloud profile. A cloud profile, as I explained to you, is a way to define the rules that TeamCity will use to launch uh, agents in a cloud. In our case, that would be an Amazon EC2 agent agents. I would provide uh, information about how quickly to terminate the instances, uh, which would be the additional uh, termination conditions. If any, I will give you, I will give TeamCD the uh, access keys uh, and some other additional information. And what I will also do is I would define a point TeamCD to a specific uh, image or um, a launch template in my AWS account or an instance, which TeamCD will use to spin up uh, the any needed number of EC2 machines on demand and then shut them down following the rules that I've provided previously. TeamCity could also uh, spin up spot instances uh, if you're um, concerned about costs of your builds, which is actually a good way to decrease those costs, uh, but uh, having a risk of uh, some of your builds sometimes being uh, stopped and then be started automatically. Um, so those are cloud profiles. They enable the test parallelization uh, on especially useful in an on-premises setup. But let's go back and see what happened to our build that was running uh, those 126 tests in parallel. We see that this build has finished. Uh, it has run 126 builds. It says that the build chain has finished. The build chain is those five builds that, that were split into five groups. Um, and now, if we look at this parameter, remember that previously we had the build that ran everything in as a single thread on a single build agent. It ran for four minutes, 20 seconds. And now the new build that ran the, all our tests in five different uh, groups ran for four, one minute and 47 seconds. And that's already an uh, improvement of more than 50%. Uh, that we have uh, been able to achieve with the test parallelization feature. I know that this is very much dependent on what types of builds you're running, how many tests you're running, uh, what those tests are. Uh, are they short tests, quick tests, long tests? It really, uh, there's a lot of uh, variables that you need to keep in mind. But uh, with this very simple demo example, I, I have shown you how to take your long running build of four minutes, 20 seconds uh, down to only one minute and 47 seconds. Um, you might say that, uh, okay, it, it's indeed a uh, almost more than a 2x improvement uh, in the speed of your builds, but you've used uh, five more build uh, agents. 
or you've used uh, five more res uh, five x resources in a cloud that costs you probably five times more. Uh, this is true, but only partially true. First of all, it's not exactly a five x uh, increase in costs because we ran it for uh, ran those agents for shorter periods of time, so it's going to be at least uh, two two point five x increase. Uh, but also, you can use cheaper machines for that. Uh, you could use uh, different types of machines and save on that uh, a little bit as well. Uh, and ultimately, this is a choice. This is a decision that you have to make. Are you willing to pay uh, an, uh, a little bit of extra costs uh, to get the results of your CI and CD bills quicker? This is ultimately your choice. Uh, but Team City shows you and provides you the tools to make it happen. So that was the demo. Uh, again, quickly to recap, we have seen how build chains reuse builds to save you on uh, not running some extra uh, parts of your build chains. Uh, we have seen how test prioritization allow you to split tests into multiple groups and finish your builds faster. And we have seen how cloud profiles enable that uh, almost unlimited resources to be run uh, to accommodate for those uh, parallel tests. Now, uh, Feel free to test out Team City uh, and see if you can achieve those speeds of 40% or more uh, uh, of uh, increasing your improving your CI and CD speeds. Uh, Team City is available for free uh, as an on premises installation, and there is a free 14 day trial for Team City Cloud. This is it for me. Thank you, and good luck with your CI and CD pipelines. <laughs>